it's tough being the middle child. I mean, not that I would know. I was the popular and generally beloved first child. My youngest sister was the adorable baby of the family, the charming little newcomer. And the two of us basically represented the genetic apex of our family's DNA. And then there's my middle sister and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Both overlooked middle children, they have plenty of experience living in the shadows of their scholarly and generally spectacular siblings. You see, Turtles 3 released in the States in 1992, just a year after the classic Turtles 2, and just a few months before the masterful Turtles 4. As a result, the legacy of Turtles 3 seems to have been lost to the relentless flow of the sewers of time, and that's a, uh, stinking shame. It may not be as highly regarded as the two games which chronologically sandwich it, but Turtles 3 is still a tremendous link in that classic chain of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles beat-em-ups. One of the best things about Turtles 3 is that it features an original plot, an excellent cue one wishes modern licensed games would take more often. The game starts out with our heroes in a half shell taking a much deserved vacation in sunny Florida. But as you might expect, the Shredder has other plans. Not only does he levitate the entire island of Manhattan above the rest of New York City, but he also kidnaps the bright and busty news reporter April O'Neil as bait for his amphibious nemeses. <laughs> bait, Shredder's such a noob. No bait is required for the wrath of T-U-R-T-L-E power. So now that we have a reason to get off our shells, it's time to again stomp the foot. And if you're familiar with how it was done in the classic Turtles games 2 and 4, you'll be pretty comfortable with repeating the process in Turtles 3. The game pretty much follows the template drawn up by its predecessor. Work your way through constant enemy hordes with addictive, if repetitive, beat-em-up gameplay, and then battle challenging bosses from the Turtles universe. It's essentially more the same stuff that made Turtles 2 such a classic, and honestly, that's reason enough to recommend this one. But to its credit, Konami did make some additions to the formula, and even though those changes certainly didn't mutate things, the tweaks they did make allow Turtles 3 to feel both similar to its predecessor, and in some ways, better. First, that leaping, instant kill attack that was essential to mastering the prior Turtles game was removed for this one. At first, that's a real disappointment, but the turtles actually have a new instant kill attack instead. They can toss enemies over their heads, which basically serves the same purpose as the strong attack from Turtles 2, and is actually more useful. Throwing enemies over your head damages any foes who may be standing behind you as well, so you're actually getting more turtle wax per move. That's wax with an H, you know, and a, and a CK. Like, Whacking someone, the verb, not the noun. Sorry. In addition to the overhead toss, each turtle also has a unique special attack. Donatello does a somersaulting bow strike. Leonardo spins like a katana tornado. Michelangelo does a brutal kangaroo kick. And the ever-aggressive Raphael can do a horizontal drill attack. These moves are especially useful on bosses. They're just devastating. So devastating, in fact, that they actually drain your health. And that's another cool thing about Turtles 3. There's a bit more strategy required. You have to fight even smarter than you did in Turtles 2. You see, points are tallied for each kill, and you get an extra life once you reach established point plateaus. But the points you're awarded are based on your kills. Easy overhead tosses may preserve your health, but they get you fewer points than using standard attacks. So there's a delicate balance between protecting your turtle by managing your health and going for maximum points. Another addition to Turtles 3 is the ability to switch turtles in-game. Anytime you lose a life, you can jump back into the game with any turtle you want, which allows you to adapt to certain situations. Add this to the new point system and the special attacks, and you've got a bit less of a button masher in Turtles 3. 
Of course, there are a few scratches on the turtle's shells, most notably some typically extreme NES flicker and slowdown. This is common in both Turtles 2 and 3, although it's definitely more pronounced in this one. But that's the cost of filling an NES screen with so many outstanding sprites and animations. Otherwise, though, there's just not much to complain about. This classic may not enjoy the same kind of retrospective praise as its siblings, but from the improved combat to the fantastic selection of characters from the cartoon and line of action figures, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project is an exemplary NES game very much worthy of renewed interest and its nuclear subtitle.